and Dylan, I'm going to throw it to you first. What's your big picture this week? My big picture this week is about our conversation that we've been having, and it is a soul searching that I've had to do over the last two, three, four years as this NIL conversation has expanded because college sports are in a transition right now, in a transition that many of us who grew up liking and loving the sport may not be prepared for. Our previous segment kind of discussed that concern around the NIL and how the sport is becoming more uh, commodified is kind of a term that's used a lot in my kind of sphere of political talk. And with it, there is a justifiable counter reaction that the game is being tarnished over it. I mean, everything that Paul is kind of discussing is coming from a place of, of concern, of legitimate concern. It's not because he's, it just really wants these players not to make their money. It's because he legitimately is concerned about this, the trend that the sport is going with Dabo and Nick, not so much. I think they're being a bit dishonest, but for a lot of the fans, that cry of concern is there. I wouldn't deny that that sentiment, even if the wording may be something that I don't exactly agree with, that college sports are being tarnished. I don't necessarily agree with the terminology of it, but in my opinion, I do agree with the sentiment. However, I would argue that it's kind of always been this way. If we really dig into it, And we think of like the pure adrenaline of a Saturday night kickoff with all these amateur players who are playing for the passion of the game and all all this kind of rhetoric that has been used around the sport. It's a false identity that was created with sports, both college basketball and college football, that have been bilking millions of dollars off of exploited labor. And the difference now is that these major schools that paid these players under and in the shadows, it's now just coming to light. It's not like these things haven't occurred before. SMU's death penalty is chief among them. What happened with the Miami Hurricanes and how that program fell. There are a number of examples that show that what is happening in the NIL is now just a much more legitimate form of what has been existing for years and years and years. And this false identity of a pure sport just really doesn't exist. Reggie Bush's folks needed to have a house for him to get to USC. Cam Newton's uncle needed to get his money in order for Cam to transfer to Auburn. These things have been happening in the sport for decades now. And the thing is, is these things have always lurked in the shadows, but we believe the sport to be kind of this last bastion of amateurism and passion for the sport and not ruined by superficial reasons. But like it or not, the players now have the power out in the open over their careers, both fiscally and on the field. The transfer portal now supports unprecedented movement, and the NIL means that these young men are able to control their own uh, their own names for profit. What positives come out of that are that it's much more clear now and evens the playing field of what's going on. The destruction of the shadow men, these shady figures that were able to make the SEC so strong, doesn't necessarily exist anymore. Now, in theory, the Big Ten is going to be able to play on that same playing field. And also the potential for things like a new EA Sports game that everybody's been missing are able to come to the light. But the negatives on that are that players aren't really just going to be on the field for the hell of it anymore. Uh, We believe that to be the case, but it wasn't then and it's not now. They aren't in this simply because of passion. They aren't in it to stick it out and go with the school through thick and thin. Those days are over and again could be argued that they never existed in the first place. I myself have struggled to come to terms with this reality, but it is the nature of this capitalistic system we've already discussed to involve money in every facet of our culture and ruin it down to the raw and cold exchange of labor for capital gains. The love of the game has a dollar value. Playing time is its own currency now, and players will exert their will on a system that exploited them for far too long. Coaches will whine and they will hand ring about how they didn't get into coaching to make money, which is a blatant lie. They will try to gatekeep these earnings that are rightfully 
owed to the exploited workforce of this million dollar industry and times have changed and with it the labor force now has a voice in the means by which their labor is used and when and how you may not like it i may not like it paul may not like it aj may not like it but as it has been said before this is america and this is the system that we have now created I'm a kid and you know I be on the way.